If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with gaming disorder, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Okay, not really, mainly because we live in a society that will probably take decades to fully understand the impact that playing video games actually has on people, or if it has one at all. We've already covered the whole violence in video games thing multiple times over the years, but on Monday of this week, a new challenger appeared so that it can scare parents into taking away your controllers, or at the very least, give them some kind of excuse for when you act like a prick and start failing your classes. Yeah, it's uh, actually, honestly, all your fault. Yeah. We're just saying that they'll have something to use as an excuse now, because on Monday, the World Health Organization officially announced gaming disorder as a new mental health condition to be included in the latest edition of the International Classification of Diseases. To reiterate here, this does basically two things. One, it gives legitimacy to people who actually suffer from what most normal people, even gamers, would consider to be a level of dependence on gaming that is affecting their lives in a way that's detrimental to their health and well-being. And two, it uh, fires up the international scaremongering machine, which will result in weeks, if not months, of coverage aimed at vilifying video games in general because of this news. Yeah, the fact that this was added to the ICD by the World Health Organization will no doubt be referenced anytime gaming is brought up in a negative way going forward, the same way the violence in video games conversation always references that debunked study from 2005 by the American Psychological Association, which claimed that their research had, quote, consistently found that violent video games influence various outcomes like aggressive thoughts and behavior and angry feelings. Now, if you remember correctly, there was a statement signed by over 200 scholars from various fields urging them to repeal the claims made in that study, but it's still referenced to this day. And we can assume that this gaming disorder classification will get trotted out anytime gaming pops up in the news as proof of the evils of video games, no matter the severity of the topic that they're discussing. Okay, so gaming disorder, what the hell does that actually mean? What does yeah. the classification say? What is it, what, how is it supposed to help anything? Mm. Here's a description from their paper. Gaming disorder is characterized by a pattern of persistent or recurring gaming behavior, digital gaming or video gaming, which may be online, i.e. over the internet or offline, manifested by one. Impaired control over gaming, e.g. onset, frequency, intensity, duration, termination, context. Two, increasing priority given to gaming to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other life's interests and daily activities. And three, continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. The behavior pattern is of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. The pattern of gaming behavior may be continuous or episodic and recurrent. The gaming behavior and other features are normally evident over a period of at least 12 months in order for a diagnosis to be assigned, although the required duration may be shortened if all diagnostic requirements are met and symptoms are severe. I mean, look, people in South Korea are letting their kids starve to death so they can play StarCraft for 24 hours. I think this is fairly legit. Yeah, well, I don't see what the problem is. Somehow this classification being made official was tied into a quote that alluded to the 20 hour per week mark being the threshold for... Okay. Yeah, <laughs> which would d diagnose gaming disorder. And while the numerous tweets referencing the Wolf of Wall Street and pumping up those rookie numbers were funny, yeah, it is important to note that the 20 hour thing has nothing to do with this latest info from the World Health Organization. It all seemingly ties back to a news story done by the BBC where they interviewed a bunch of Irish lads about their time spent gaming, and they all concluded that they played around 20 hours or more per week. 20 to 22 hours a week on gaming. 25 to 30 hours a week playing the uh, Xbox. About 20 hours a week of gaming. It just so happens that they attached this video as a reference to the news about the gaming disease thing. As far as we can tell, and we looked extensively, the two aren't related at all, and since we just read you the whole description from the paper itself, you'll know that there's no time limit that measures how affected you may or not may not be by it. So yeah. those two things, nothing to do with each other, it just happened to be that BBC was like, you know what, we did a video about kids playing games too long. Let's attach it to this new blurb from the World Health Organization. A lot of, uh, a lot of news sites do this and it's very confusing. It's also yeah. disingenuous. Yeah, I don't like it. Because like the memes don't say- Don't post videos on your news articles if the video wasn't made specifically for that news article. As the memes would have you believe and is true, 20 hours, not really a, a, a tough threshold to I hit mean, per week. Yeah, and even if 20 hours was bad, what about all the people who watch 20 hours of TV or mm -hmm. 20 hours of baseball? Exactly. Cup. Or the, I mean, it's the World Cup right now. We all know that people have died watching the World yeah, Cup. Those so. games take like two hours. And nothing happens. Anyways, b back to this story. Yeah, 
So, yeah, so how would someone be considered to be affected by a gaming disorder? Well, according to one of the doctors who proposed the entry, Dr. Vladimir Pozniak, he indicates that the uh, actual overall prevalence of the disorder in the terms that they laid out would be very low, mm -hmm. saying that millions of gamers around the world, even when it comes to the intense gaming, would never qualify as people suffering from gaming disorder, adding that only licensed healthcare professionals would even be able to diagnose this. And some mental health specialists are already saying that the whole thing is premature with licensed psychologist Anthony Bean saying in an interview that it's not really a good idea to go forward with this diagnosis. Uh, it really opens the door for anything to be a sickness, absolutely anything. Watching too much football on TV, doing too much research could be considered behaviorally addictive if mental health professionals don't insist on more rigorous study of the issue. Opening that door is a Pandora's box. I mean, I'm of the belief that anything can be addictive. Yeah. And that most people are, at least to a degree, addicted to a lot of different shit. Well, this is the, in this report, gaming was like the only thing right under a subcategory that involved one other topic, gambling. So there is no... I mean, there's a similar, like... Yeah, it's, it's similar, but... There's it, a dopamine rush. Mm -hmm. it's, there's, I mean... I don't think this is complete bullshit, honestly. Yeah. Anyways, he also stated during that interview that he, quote, sees people who play video games and believe themselves to be on the lines of addicted are, quote, actually using gaming more as a coping mechanism for either anxiety or depression. Yeah, but, I mean, you could make that same argument about, like, doing, football. doing drugs. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you don't start a drug addiction because you're all good and normal. There's usually some anxiety and depression yeah. that you're self-medicating for. Overall though, as you can see, information about gaming and how it affects a person's mental state, it's all over the place and extremely difficult to nail a diagnosis like this down. Uh, if you'd like more information, including a summary regarding the pros and cons of this recent news, we highly suggest checking out an article written by Platinum Paragon, where she summarizes gaming disorder as well as the positives and negatives of this new classification on her website. We'll leave a link below in the description because she's way more suited and far more knowledgeable on the subject than we would ever hope to be in just one daily episode. But uh, I was talking with her in, in Twitter DM and she was saying that it's a good thing because it allows it to be regulated on a scale that it hasn't seen before. And usually, like in, in some countries, they will just take games away from people and put them into isolation. And that's yeah. apparently very bad and people have died yeah. with that kind of situation. So yeah. Werner Herzog interviewed a couple of those people yeah. for uh, that movie he made a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but whatever. For now, <laughs> just, you know, calm down, play your games in moderation. Also, don't assume that you can just stop working or going to school and play games for 12 hours a day and then say you have an addiction and start getting disability checks because that sure as hell <laughs> is not happening no. either. Yeah. If anything, you'll have to quit all that stuff and then game for 12 hours a day and then stream it all on Twitch with a huge following and then you'll actually be fine and rich. Yeah, then it's okay. Then it's a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, subscribe, hit the bell. Don't forget to check out the brand new episode of Idiots Watching Anime that we released Sunday night. Uh, also, we want to take a moment here to thank some of the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for your contributions over this past, past month. We are extremely grateful for the support and we'll be working on the physical rewards this week for those of you who hopped in uh, right physical beginning. rewards, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're uh, all getting the tug job. Uh, th those of you that started in May and then June obviously will come later, but uh, we're going to ma be mailing out the... Uh, the postcards very soon. I ordered the posters. The posters will be in soon. Nice. So keep an eye out for those. And uh, thank you to everyone so far that has contributed to the Patreon. Here's some names. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, let's, let's see those names. Bye. Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. Look at those names. Mm.